Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this morning's study, second study of the week. And um, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? <clears throat> a dear, gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful for all that you do in our lives, the things that you have been teaching us, uh, the trials that we have faced, and uh, the support and love that we feel from one another and from you through thy spirit. We know, Lord, that um, as we continue these studies, that you have a purpose in them uh, that we may not always see. And so we just ask that you can lead and guide, uh, that you can show us the things that we need to see for our own lives and for those that are watching these videos, that they may be drawn close to you. Be with us now. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so... <clears throat> I'm just going to give a quick review of what has been happening. So we have uh, gone through uh, Daniel chapter 11 um, all the way up to verse 16. And as we got there, we were having trouble placing these on the lines that we had. So we have this um, chart here. So let me go look at this. Instead of this, because we still got the verses here. So we were having trouble placing our application in these lines. So the present truth application. And we need to clean this all up. But one of the things that we saw is that the end, and, and after going through like all these civil wars, um, you know, in ancient Israel, in, in our time, then uh, it's, it's actually helped us to sort through this a little better. So I think we're more equipped to, to put the present truth application in. Lots of this needs to be changed. Um, but the other thing that we came to recognize is that uh, the end, these, these chapters dealing with, with Rafi and Pania, they have an application to our time and, and leading up to the Sunday law. But as well, they mark the beginning of Rome, and the beginning of Rome is going to begin uh, when Rome uh, exalts itself to establish the vision in our history, which is prior to 1989. So when we're studying Rome, then we're going to, just as we did with Persia and Greece, we're going to be looking at our line. That, that means we have actually two applications, present truth applications, to these verses here, 14, 15, and 16, uh, because 14 is when Rome is, uh, exalts itself to establish the vision, and Jeff has applied that in the past. I'm not sure what he does now, but um, he applied that to um, that period when Rome came in in connection with the United States in um, attacking uh, Russia, right? So even though there are some differences about this history, because in this history, uh, when we see Rome exalting itself to establish the vision, it's actually supporting the king of the south, where in our history, it's the king of the north. There's reasons for that. Lots of it has to do with the prophetic mirror, but also where we are in, in these lines. So this king of the north, king of the south motif um, uh, can be reversed as far as, you know, how we see, uh, the, how do we see their interplay, uh, with our history and the different histories. Now, uh, one of the things dealing with the Civil War that was rather interesting is that Stephen had, um, pointed out, he had actually put it on the Unity chat, the call to unity, um, that there is a war uh, a civil war film coming out on April 26th. So April 26th is the 26th day of the fourth month. It's this symbol that we got um, from the prophecy of Josiah Litch dealing with the first and second woe, because it's going to begin um, on 1299 on July 27th on the Julian calendar, which happens to be the 26th day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar. And each of the waymarks. Um, in that history, in the hour, 
the, the month, day, and year, they all fall on the 26th day of the fourth month. It's a rather complicated, interesting structure with Julian and Gregorian dates. Um, and it's, of course, July 18, 2020. One of the keys in picking that date was the 26th day of the fourth month. We also used Ezekiel's uh, 10th day of the fifth month to get July 18th, Julian in 2020. And when we use Josiah Lich's prophecy to get July 18, 2020, which is the 26th day of the fourth month. So we have this civil war coming up. Now it's the Obamas who, who created this film company that's going to be putting out this film. And, uh, it's, it's about a future civil war, I guess the one that we're in right now, uh, and what's going to happen. So I have no idea what the, the plot is. Stephen says there's some things about 19 states end up leaving the union. So they're going to have it, I guess, somewhat similar to what happened with, um, uh, the civil war back in, in the 1860s, you know, so that the states are seceding from the union. And I'm not sure if that's actually how a civil war is going to happen in the United States, that you're going to have uh, that type of civil war. I mean, that's usually what Americans think of as civil war, but it's actually not usually the pattern because civil wars are just wars within a country. Um, so not all countries have states that, that separate. Often it's just, it's just citizen against citizen. So ideology against ideology. Um, so. So anyway, what, how that's going to happen in the United States, whether, whether this movie has any significance in that, I don't think it matters. What, what does matter is just as a symbol, we can see that this movie called, uh, I guess it's called the Civil War, is coming at a timely time where we're studying all of this, but also it's on that date, April 26th. So. Um, <clears throat> so that's one of the things we looked at yesterday. So I'm not really sure how we're going to proceed with this. Now, uh, you that are here, we got Iran, William, Eldon, Dana. Um, often uh, if I have Dwight, he's going to talk a little bit. You guys are not real talkers. William might talk a bit. Iran will usually put stuff in the, in the chat. Angela will usually put lots of Bible references in the chat, but she's not here. So um, we're just going to do the best that we can. Um, often I feel a little bit like, well, I'm the one figuring everything out and you're just kind of following. But um, I know that if I make mistakes, you know, you guys are here to correct me as well as, as the Holy Spirit can speak to us. So, um, we're going to just look back at these lines again. So, so in these verses, we have Rome exalts itself to establish the vision, but it's going to happen in those times. Now, the characteristic of that phrase, the, the thing that was interesting as we looked at this in the last few times, is that it's the Hebrew numbers um, H6256, and um, 1992. So these numbers here down at the footnote at the bottom here. And, um, and we're, we're saying that these connect from 9-11. So if you count from 9-11, it brings you to April 10th, 2024. So that's going to be um, <clears throat> uh, the first day of the first month. And when that film comes out, on April 26th, it's going to be the 17th day of the first month. Now, I didn't put that in here. I probably will in some kind of chart um, just to show how this works. But right now, I just put this as this footnote. Now, we had noted that um, 5256, it's, well, it's a symbol of uh, a day for a year because 5 times 2 times 5 times 6 is 360. And um, it also is the word times. So... Um, now, if we count that from 9-11, it's going to bring us to October 28th, 2018. Now, Jeff does a summary of the nine, 391 and a half, um, just out a week after the camp meeting had ended in 2018. And, uh, so that's the 391 and a half and the connection to November 9th, 2019. So he's going to look at, um, 
October 13th to, to November 9th, 2019, specifically. So I will add some of these charts into this document. So, um, and in that summary, Jeff is going to be addressing, um, I, I, I put it on the YouTube page so people should watch that video or at least read through the transcript. So, so it's pretty interesting, uh, the things that are talked about there. So, so we have that. What, what we say from that is then when we get to in those times during the fifth Syrian war, right? That this is going to relate to what's happening in our lines. So the first day of the first month in 2024 to the first day of the first month in 2030. That is, it brings us to the first day of the first month in 2024. That's a symbol. And then we have the first day of the first month in 2030. So again, uh, that's another symbol. Now this is, is a period of six years, right? So, um, <clears throat> So six years, well, there's some, some things we could think about that. Um, but anyway, we're just going to say it's six years. So it's six years, it's one less than seven years. Now we have first days of the first months to the first days of the first months. Um, and, well, that was the other thing is if we go to April 5th, 2030 and we count back, uh, it says there shall be many. So that's H7227. So if we count that date, or that number back, and I don't think I have it in here. I do have it added here. Um, so I'm going to put a footnote here. So I have, it says eight. Okay. Oh, I just added it there. So um, I'm going to add another thing here. So that's adding it to what we had. We get one, five, four, seven, five, or minus. So that number is 14,700. Oh, so. That's the number we subtract this number and we get July 18 as a symbol, but we need to put something here. So, uh, when we count back, we get, uh, 622. So I'm going to add this footnote. I'm just going to add these, these details in here. So if I take H7227 and I subtract that from April 5th, 2030, it's going to bring me to uh, June 22nd, 2010. Okay. So June 22nd, 2010 is um, obviously June 22nd, the symbol of, of FFA. It's that date that Jeff had marked. And uh, 622, a characteristic of 622, it has a relationship to 1533. So 1533 is minus 622 is 911. So I'm just going to put that in here. Um, so I'll do this here. 1533 minus 622 equals 911. And then. So these little numerical clues that we get from these words um, just help establish what we already had established, that these relate to our time. Now, when we look at this history, we have Philip King uh, V, King of Macedon, and Antiochus III, right? So they're going to make war against the King of the South. Now, we put here that they're going to represent republicanism in the USA. Before, we just had they represent the USA. But uh, they're going to make war, and we're saying that that's propaganda, against the king of the south and Ptolemy the fourth Philopater, uh, we're going to equal to Biden and the Democrats. So this is obviously a battle between the king of the north and the king of the south. And this is going to be related to the battle of Panin, like historically. And then we talked a lot about the robbers of thy people. Now, a point that was made uh, yesterday that Dwight and I discussed had to do with the literal translation of this. So uh, you could translate it as children of the breakers of thy people. Now, uh, so, the, so the children, this is a thing that uh, Dwight was trying to emphasize. 
And the question is, what's the significance of it there? Well, it's there, right? So he was saying, and um, that we would, you know, we're not we're not saying that it means it's the children, but he was trying to have some way in connection with that we could apply to our time. Now, what I have said is that this word robbers um, is attached to another word. So I'm going to put the words here uh, that we have. Um, and it's going to be H121 and H66530. Okay, so we're going to put these in here. So what's, um, now I haven't really spent much time analyzing these numbers themselves. So 1121 as a number, that's going to be the one that, that's, um, going to be uh, Ben, right? So that's just like Benjamin, you know, so Ben. Um, and then uh, the word that's translated as breakers is the H65, H6530. Okay, so is there anything about these numbers uh, that we could take into account? So we know, I mean, we can put them in... Uh, so one one two one. Uh, this number is nineteen times fifty nine. The sum of the divisors is twelve hundred. Anything else about this number? So I'm doing this right now. Now, if we add them together, we get seven six five one. Uh, what would be the significance of that number? We should recognize that number. Okay, so. It is the number seven. Okay, in Hebrew, uh, the number 7651, which occurs 393 times in the King James. So I'll show you what I'm doing here. So this is the word that is in Leviticus 26. Now, sometimes you'll see it as 7650, and sometimes as 7651. So I'm going to show you this here. Um, so the word Sheba, it's um, 7650. Um, here, maybe I'll do it this way. Okay, I'm going to make this bigger so you can see this. Okay, so this is the word Sheba. It's count, translated as seven. And um, in Leviticus 26, they're going to give... Uh, 7650 as it, but you'll see here they're going to have Leviticus 26 verse 18, but 7651. So actually, that's the one they do use. 7651. So this is the word Shiva in verse 18, 24, and 28. So is this significant? Now, if we had Dwight here, he would say, of course, right? <laughs> In a nice deep voice. Um, so if we're going to say that this is, I'll do it this way. I'm going to go add equals 7651. So I guess I'll put an H in front of it. Oh, I might have put a two there. Okay, 7651, which is Sheba. Seven. Okay. So this is pretty significant, is it not? Yes, says Dwight, and I hope other people agree. Now, <clears throat> what's happening there? Oh, got the wrong keyboard. So I'll just hang on. Got the French Canadian keyboard. There we go. <clears throat> so if we have that word that's translated seven times, in Leviticus 26, what does that mean about, because it, it's it's the robbers of thy people, the children of the robbers of thy people, the children of the breakers of thy people, I guess I need to put here. Does that relate at all to the seven times? The breakers of our of thy people, do, do we in any way, can we associate Rome, Pagan and papal Rome, 
having anything to do with the 2520. Yeah. We, we would have to, yes, right? So I, I think this is pretty interesting. Well, I need to share the screen and put it in there. You guys can't even see what I'm doing. Um, switch the screens here. So I put this in. We got um, also the robbers, right, or the children of the breakers of thy people. They put here, there's these two numbers equaling up to 7651, right? That is the Hebrew word Sheba, which is translated to seven times in Leviticus 26 and literally is the children of the breakers of thy people, right? So this is Rome, the papacy. Now, now Rome, of course, does not begin the 2520, but Rome definitely is at the end of the first 1260 years. And, and it's definitely there as the breakers. Now, this idea of breakers, <clears throat> um, a peretz, it, it's, it doesn't occur many times in scriptures. It's in Daniel 11, 14, Ezekiel 7, 22, Jeremiah 7, 11, Psalm 17, 4, uh, Isaiah 35, 9, and Ezekiel 18, verse 9 and 10 twice, and also Jeremiah 7, 11 twice. Um, so we're going to look at those verses. We're just going to try to discern a little bit more about this. Before you do that. Well, Okay. Hi, Dwight. Good morning. As you go back into that, uh, on your seven times on that document, separate, yeah. separate seven from times. Okay. Like that. Right. Okay. Okay. And maybe what I'll do is do this. I just kind of want to show that it's, it's that phrase. Correct. Seven. I agree. And it's one word. And, you know, it's two words in the King James, but it's one word in the Hebrew. That's why. So that, that will help a little bit. So, so you, you caught what we're doing here. We're taking the children of the robbers of thy people and we're adding the two Hebrew numbers together and we get the Hebrew number Sheba. Totally logical and very revelatory. Yes. <laughs> Nicely done. It's the Holy Spirit. I mean, we just looked exactly. at this, right? So. It just it just stands out there for us to see. And and all I was doing is just adding to see what span of time they would be. But as soon as I see seven six five one, I'm thinking that's Sheba. So um you know sometimes you'll see the seven as seven six five zero or seven six five two, you know, depending on the usage. But in the King James, in Strong's numbers. He uses 7651 for those four places in Leviticus 26. And if we're going to take the breakers of thy people or the children of the breakers of thy people, we can see that that relates to, to Rome as this power that tramples, right? That breaks, that crushes, right? Right. Okay. So, so this just fits in just so beautifully. Um, uh, it, it's it's actually quite quite amazing, right? I mean, this is this is one of those strange coincidences because we already have this interpretation. So so this hasn't um, given us this interpretation of who the breakers of thy people are and that it's been related to the twenty five twenty. Because notice we're going to have later about the chazon from seven twenty two seven twenty three BC to seventeen ninety eight, right? The two desolating powers. We already have that in our study here. But this, this little phrase that we've been looking at, uh, now we see it's, it's, it's a huge, uh, revelation, uh, to see this here. It's, it's very confirming of what we have been doing with these passages. No, it, it supports everything that we've been addressing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it's very encouraging to, right, to see that God is doing this, that he's showing us these things at this time. Okay, so um, now, so I want to look at the breakers of that people. I want to look at this, these verses that use this word. Sure. Right? So it's, um, 
Okay, and so we have uh, Jeremiah seven verse eleven. Is this is this house which is called by my name become the den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. Now, so remember, Jesus quotes this. Right? Right. Okay, so the den of thieves it was how we would get it in the King James uh, New Testament there. So you're going to have this. Uh, let me see. That's going to be, I guess you got it in Matthew. And he said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Right. Another one. Um, now, here in this case, it's is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of, of thieves. But it's still the same idea. Now, we see um, um, here it talks about the house of prayer. So Christ is putting together, you know, a, not a direct quote of this verse. But just the idea that his house is a house of prayer, that's in Isaiah 56, verse 7. And Second um, Chronicles 6, 33, that's Solomon's prayer when he's dedicating um, the temple, right? And it's also in Mark eleven seventeen. 17. Uh, is that significant? Only if you like math. Yes. So, uh, so 11 times 17 is 187 plus... Right. 1117 is the 187th prime number. And, and I don't know of any other number that does that. I tried to figure out if that, if this could occur with other numbers. And I haven't found any examples of it. I tried, you know, I, I'd probably have to go through all the numbers, all the prime numbers and see. But I started going through them. And when I say all the prime numbers, all of them, which we don't have all of them, but that they would, uh, produce, um, you know, the number that they are prime of, right? By just a simple mathematical breaking it into two parts. So I think I actually looked at all the four digit prime numbers, but, um, but I didn't find it. So, so this is pretty remarkable characteristic of the number 187. <clears throat> so, um, so again, you, you got that same, same sort of verse, and um, and then you're going to have it in. Uh, so I'm going to go back here, and it's in John uh, two sixteen. Is that significant? And he said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. It's a little bit different, right? Um, in 216, we know that's six times six times six is 216. So we have 666 here. We have uh, 187 here. I don't know this any significance in 2113. Oh, 2113, if you multiply 21 by 13, what do you get? I knew there must be something. 273. 273. So we got 273, we got 187, and we have 666, all being represented in three of those verses. Now, Luke 19, um, we have uh, three symbols here, because it says, uh, now they give us a reference in the Treasury of Scripture knowledge to Luke 19, verse 45, and 19, verse 46. Though technically... It would just be 1946. But 19 and 46, what is that? <laughs> the 45 years and the 46 years after 1798. So, right. so 1843 and 1844. And then you have the 19 years, right? So right. 19 plus 46 is the 65 years at the end or the beginning, right? In, I mean, at the beginning of the 2520, it's going to be 19. And then, you know, to 723 and then from 722. And then it's going to be 46 years to 677. So, again, it's giving us these symbols of the prophetic mirror. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not usually so giddy about stuff. But 
You can see the significance of all of this when we deal with that breakers, right? So we're just we're just dealing with the breakers so far. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this stuff in a, um, a footnote. So now what we have to do is we have to we're, we're gonna take this um, an examination of the word uh, robbers. So just the word robbers. Um, it's in. Uh, I'm just gonna go back. So. It's interesting with what you have on the screen right now. Yeah. When you're when you start looking at this from Luke 19:41 to Luke 19:46. Yeah, I know. It, you, you got the. Uh, um, you got these. Uh, uh, where he's going to weep over Jerusalem. So you got um, Daniel 11 verse 41 to 45. To that first part, right? So I don't know how we look at that. But um, anyway, I, I got to get this other stuff done. We can talk about that a bit more later. So what we have is we have, um, they're going to give us, um, where was this? Do it this way. Okay. So we're going to look at this word. Robert. So that's what we did first, right? So we went to Jeremiah 7.11, okay? And in 7.11 is going to be this verse where, um, so I'm going to do it, I'm going to do this, I'll do it this way. Um, I'm going to get rid of all these other numbers for now. Just looking at them as I delete them. You know, the thing that's amazing is how God can um, fit so many things together in such a unlikely way that, um, like, how many things God has to take into account just for us, right, to, to notice these things and, and to give us a knowledge of these things at the right time, at the time that we need it. Uh, I think that's extremely remarkable. So I'm just going to put this as, and then I'm going to give the references, the scripture references we get when we go to this verse. So, so when we go to the verse itself, as you see on the screen there, I'm, I'm putting in the footnotes, you can't see what I'm doing there. Uh, but when we went to the treasury of scripture knowledge, so these are the translators' notes. They're going to give us um, these different verses now uh, where it's quoted. So that's going to be Matthew 21, 13, right? all these different verses here. Okay, so now let's go there. So when we put these in, we're going to have Matthew uh, 21, 13, and 21 times 13. 273. Okay, that makes sense. And then we have um, Mark 11, 17. 11 times 17 equals 187. And I don't need to put about it. It's the 187th prime number. We know that already. I hate abbreviations. Okay, and then we have this Luke, it, and I'm just, what's that? It's also interesting when you're dealing with all these other references. Yeah. When you're looking at these in the Greek, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, but not so much John, the Greek number is 3027. Okay. So that is, of course, uh, related the to digits Mark. of 273. Yeah. And it's also March 27th. If you just took the three and then the 27, right? Right. Right. So, okay. So in this, uh, 1946, we can know that's uh, the 19 plus 
the 46, which equals 65 years of the prophetic mirror. But I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss. Why, why John 2, 16? Why John 2, 16? Yes. Take these things hence, make not thy father's house and house of merchandise. So this is when he cleanses the temple the first time. So it's six times six times six. Is that what you're asking? Well, no, I mean, every, all of the other verses that you, you're noting right now. Yeah. Have he, or have Greek 3027 in the verse. Okay. And in John, um, 216, it doesn't have the word robbers there. Correct. Right. It, it's going to say making my house a house of, uh, you know, an emporium or a mart. Um, Yes, but it is, of course, still referencing that, right? It's just using a different different way of describing it. Now, um, now when they they give us, you know, references back to this, they're going to give us Jeremiah seven eleven, and um, and then we're also going to have Isaiah fifty six. Um, so that one has a lot of things in it. Um, yeah. So, so the, the translators are, are connecting it back to really Jeremiah 7 11 primarily. But yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't have the, the Greek word for robbers or thieves. So we can see we got all of these symbols we have. And even Jeremiah 7, 11, I mean, we know that we have 11 and 7 together, right? And that, and that we use this as a symbol for, uh, July 18th. So, so it's there as well, but definitely the references, the 273, the 187, the 65 years, the 19 plus 46, and then John 216, the 666, right? Okay. Um, so that's just looking at the first um, example that the Treasury script, tr- Scripture knowledge gives us for that verse, right? So when we, or for that word. So when we looked at, again, we go back here, um, we looked at Jeremiah 7.11. So that's going to be the first one it gives here in this list, right? Um, not the first one in the Bible, because Psalms is before that. Okay. Then we have Ezekiel 7.22. My face will I turn also from them that pollute my secret place, for the robbers shall enter into it and defile it. So when we talk about his secret place, what is that? So what are they going to pollute? Is this the remnant? Well, I mean, if you look at the context here, this is going to be um, the day of the Lord's wrath in Ezekiel, right? Um, so this is going to be the chapter before the 666 chapter or 665, which gives us 666, right? So, so this is still part of the first vision. Right. And um, so he's just talking about the coming judgments. I'm just reading through it quickly. All hands shall be feeble, feeble, and all knees shall be weak as water. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror shall cover them. And shame shall be upon all faces, and baldness upon all their heads. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. And they shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. And as for the beauty of his ornament, he shall set it in majesty. But they made the images of their abominations and their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them. And I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil. And they shall pollute it. Um, 
My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my secret place, for the robbers shall enter into it and defile it. So, I mean, this would be talking about the destruction of Jerusalem. Is it talking just about the destruction of Jerusalem, or is it talking about the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple? Well, yes. Yeah, the temple. That's because that's the secret place. So... Yeah, so the temple is obviously included there. So those are, uh, you know, two places where we're going to get robbers, right? Thieves, whatever you want to call them, breakers. Now, in Psalm 17, verse 4, we're also going to have that word. And concerning the works of men, by the words of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. So this is a prayer of David, and and it's just that God is going to preserve us. Now, it's also translated as ravenous in Isaiah 35, 9. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast. So you think about a beast. What is a beast? What is a lion? These are symbols of these destructive kingdoms, right? Right, correct. So... So that relates, of course, to the 2520 as well. And, and then we have uh, two other places in Ezekiel where it is mentioned. Um, Ezekiel 18, uh, verse 9 and 10. Right, specific in, in verse 10, yes. Yeah, I wonder why they put the two verses there. Um, what I have been finding when I have looked at this Mm-hmm. With Esword, there are times that they will join a couple of verses together. Okay. And but it's only one son. Right. Okay. So if he begetteth a son, it is a robber. So notice here we have the son and the robber together. Right. So if he beget a son that is a robber. A shedder of blood, right? So you're going to get A2110 and A1818. And doeth the like to any one of these things, and that doeth not any of those duties, but even hath eaten upon the mountains and defiled his neighbor's wife, hath oppressed the poor and needy, right? So this is about, um, if we remember this, the soul that sins it shall die. So this is... This is that famous verse, you know, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. You'll never eat again. There'll be no more occasion to use this proverb in Israel. Right. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. OK. OK, but now <clears throat> when you're looking at 18, as you're looking at 1810 right now. Yeah. Yeah. The alternate reading for robber would be breaker up of a house. Right. Yeah, that's the idea of a breaker, right? So that's just the same word, 6530, the breakers of thy, the son of the breakers of thy people, the children of the breakers of thy people, right? So you can see here you got those two words together. So the point is we have these two words together that we have in Daniel 1114. The other places, we don't have those two words together. Right. Okay. So um, so if he beget a son that is a robber. Now, um, I'm just looking at that word beget. Mm-hmm. So 11, 20, okay. So it's, I'm just looking up son here. Okay. So we got, we got that word robber here. And, and the context then, The fact that we have the two together should be noted in some way, right? Because it's it's the same phrase. Now, this one is, if you get a son that is a robber, but it's still the same two words in the same order. Right. Um, I'm just going to look at it in Hebrew here quickly. There it is. And there's, there's just, it's just here it's plural. 
That's the only difference. So a son that is a robber, or here it's sons of robbers. Right? So it's a little bit different. But they are the same two Hebrew words, just in a different form. Iran is pointing us to something here that I need to look at. Okay, so we're, you're saying that 810 plus 710, so it's a mathematical thing here, 810 plus 710 equals 18. 25, yeah, 1810, pardon me, plus 710 equals 2520, okay, oh, and, yeah, the 810 years from 34 A.D. to 1844 plus 677. Okay, that, that's interesting. Okay. So, again, is this giving us connections to the 2520, this whole phrase? It is, right? The 1810 years. That's, that's where some people try to talk about the prophetic periods that end in 1844 that Ellen White's talking about. They're talking about the, the 810 years from uh, 34 AD that are left over when you subtract uh, the uh, 490, which of course, you know, that's, it's not a prophetic period. It's just a mathematical calculation, which is different. But yeah, here we can see. If we add, now adding 710, that's the seventh month, tenth day, right? That's the idea of why you're adding that. Well, not just that. I mean, yeah, that's one thing, but it, wouldn't it be 710 years from 677 BC? Well, yeah, it is. <clears throat> yeah, if you're going to add uh, the six. 77 there. Yeah, so it would it would have 710 on either side, essentially. Yes. Um, well, I don't know about on either side. You got the 710 to 34 AD. And well, then you're saying... It's a, it's a date on one side, and it's oh, okay. a span on the other side. Yeah, okay. And, well, it, yeah, and it's a date in 34 AD, right, that ends... And also in 1844, both of those end on the 10th day of the seventh month. Stephen's going to be stoned on the 10th day of the seventh month. Yeah, so that's uh, pretty interesting. Um, so I'm going to copy this. It's easier than me doing it again. Um, and then I'm going to need to put it in this verse. Sorry, it takes me so long to do this. So one, one, two, one. Okay. And so then we have so 810 plus 217 is equals 2520. And that gives us that 34 AD as well. Plus 677 BC. Okay, I'll understand. I might edit it a little bit and try to make it clear. Okay. <clears throat> so it gives us the, set, the 70 weeks uh, connected to um, 70 weeks connected to the 2520s. All of that's just in that in that verse. Um, and of course we have the seven times there. So <clears throat> Well, God keeps showing us stuff, and this is, I think, pretty important for what we're doing here. <clears throat> so it may, you know, to some people be a little bit kind of nitpicky here that, you know, we're noticing these details. We're taking a lot of time with these details here. But in order to understand the robbers of thy people that exalt themselves to establish the vision, that vision has to be the Chazon from 723 BC to 1798 to represent the two desolating powers. Right? So, um, so now we, we have this here, so we can place this here in the history. And, and so we put it in bold black letters. But now if we want to take this seven times in Leviticus 26, that is the robbers of thy people, 
uh, and we want to relate it to our line, what would we put here? What are the symbols that are being given here? We have the 273, right? We had the, um, can't even remember them all now. Yeah, so we had uh, the 273, uh, the 187, uh, the prophetic mirror itself, the six times six times six, that's the Sunday law, right? And then um, these other symbols relating to the, to these prophetic lines as well, when we see it in Ezekiel 18.10. So if we're, if we're going to try to apply this now, so this, this historically connects us to the 225.20s. It connects us to, to that, that period of time in which paganism and papalism reigned that brings us to 1798, to the time of the end. So, if we're going to put a present truth application, what would we put in red letters here? So I got to sh- change the screen so you can see what I'm looking at. Okay. So now we have all of this Sheba seven times, Leviticus 26, the children of the breakers, like we've, we've studied that out, but now we need to apply it into the present truth application. And we're saying that, this line is dealing with the Biden, the Democrats, this civil war between the North and the South. This is relating to the Battle of Panean. So what are the symbols suggesting about, because the breakers of thy people are going to be wrong, but all of these symbols are, are tying us to the 25-20. The, the desolating powers. So, I mean, maybe we would just say, you know, Rome exalts itself to establish the vision, right? That's going to be the next part. But we have all of these symbols about the robbers of thy people or the sons of the robbers of thy people, which is probably what I should put here instead of children, because it is sons. So what are we going to put here? How does this relate to our lines? Where are we going to place it in time? Because if we look at all these symbols, we have the symbol. These are some of these symbols relate directly to our 777 structure, right? Because we have the 273. So that's, that's the way mark of March 23rd. Correct. March, pardon me, March 27th, 2021. We have the 187 that relates to July 18, 2020. Okay. The 666 relates to December 25th, 2021, because that we symbolically marked as the Sunday law. Now, what about November 9th? Is there anything here that connects us to November 9th? Because even Jeremiah 711, seven times 11 is 77. That's why even if we took this one that's 11 times 17, Mark 11, 17, you can see it also gives a 7, 7, 7, because you could multiply 11 times 7 or 111 times 7. Okay, but using some of the other tools that we that we have been working with. Yeah. When you go to the Bible indexer. Yeah, I knew you were going to go there. Okay. You did. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, fine. I knew you were. <laughs> so what's in the Bible indexer? Okay, mind? Jeremiah. I, I'm just, I'm walking through this. Just to see what other things we might find. <clears throat> okay. Um, 711, of course, is the 46th Bible chapter trying to see what other items there might be that that would make sense for us. Okay. Matthew 21, 13, the reverse Bible verse, has the digits of 273. Now, if we take um, the lexical number. Okay. That's that's just all of the, the, in Jeremiah's, 
7 verse 11, if you take all of the Hebrew numbers in that verse, you get, uh, as you, if you're, if you're here, well, let's go here so people can see what we're looking at. This is the Bible indexer. You can see the verse and they have this lexical number. So that's this 63438. Right. Now, when I see a number like that, I always think back to the first day of the first month in 1844, because I know that we can count, um, you know, six, 67,000, uh, 920 days to April 5th, 2030, right? That's going to be 2300 months. But when I see a number like this, I, I, I want to know from the first day of the first month in 1844, what date does it come to in our history? It, you know, so I know that when I'm in the 63,000s, it's going to produce dates that in, are in our time. Okay. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. So, um, so that date that it produces, if I go from April 5th, uh, 2030, or no, 20, April, April 19th, 1844, it brings me to, uh, December 26, 2017, um, which is, uh, the seventh day of the 10th month on the biblical calendar. <clears throat> Now, uh, if I go in inclusive count, it would bring me to December 25th. So the significance of that would be um, that we have December 25th um, marked in our lines all the time, right? So, so there might be something there to December 25th because that's the end of our structure is a December 25th date. Now, 2017 is four years before December 25th, uh, 2021. Um, but it's still, still significant. So either we count, uh, just a cardinal count will bring us to the seventh day of the 10th month, which is the symbol of the 10th day of the seventh month, or an ordinal count would bring us to December 25th, 2017. Now in our history, when we deal with 2017, um, it's 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 a really important year. That is, that year is the center of this structural chiasm, right? So so anyway, it's just just um, an observation, and I'm just going to do a couple of other things here. Yeah, it's it's 93 days after that uh, start of the 777. Uh, that goes from September 23rd, 2017 to November 9th, 2017. So that's I'm not sure if that's significant. 93 is, is a number that, that, uh, is, um, if you take 93 times two, you get 186, right? So that's the number of cardinal days from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month. So, so there's something in there that I'm not, I'm not sure about. So if you count, um, if you add the 93, um, so if you count the number of days and then you count back 93 days, it brings you to, um, uh, September 23rd, 2017. And if you count a, a, an ordinal count from, um, December 25th or 26th, it's going to bring you to March 27th, 2018. So I know that's a little bit obscure, but, but I think it's significant about that verse. So there's probably other things that we could find in this ver verse. Um, you know, if we spend some time, but to me, that lexical sum connecting us to sort of a midpoint between March 27th, 2018 and um, September uh, 23rd, 2017. Okay, so let's get back to the document here. So we've spent a lot of time anal analyzing numbers here. We have enough symbols to, to understand what these lines, what this, what this means, right? So if we're going to get to, um, the sons of the breakers of thy people, what, what it's going to relate to. 
it's going to uh, relate to uh, the 777 structure. Does that make sense? Can we agree with that, that it relates to that structure? Yes, it does. Okay. <clears throat> now, now, in that structure, we have lots of things happening. We have a type of the Sunday law that occurs. Or we have the pandemic. Um, we have all the things that happen in our movement, our failed prediction. Uh, we have, uh, you know, the election of Joe Biden, right, in that history. Right. And um, so we have this connection to the Trump prediction, if you want to put it that way. What, what's what's going to happen there? So now we're saying that Rome exalts themselves. So the papacy here exalts themselves, comes into history to join in the threefold union at the Sunday law. And I don't think that that's what's happening here. So that is, um, if we're going to be addressing this line, this line coming from uh, the end, because we're marking the end of our structure, I don't think we would put the Sunday law here. But they, they exalt themselves to establish the vision. The question is, what does the papacy do in that history? Is the papacy going to be supporting wokeism in this history? Are they supporting the king of the south? In the initial history or in our history? Well, in both, it happens, right? They're going to be supporting Egypt, right? All right. Because they don't want Egypt to be conquered completely by the king of the north, by Syria. Technically and, by Greece. Yes, right? So, so, yeah, so they don't want, they want Egypt to survive because otherwise Greece becomes too powerful if it's all united, right? So, so here they come into history. So the point is, um, uh, to support Egypt, I think would be a better way of looking at it. They exalt themselves to support Egypt. In our history, Close the paragraph on to support Egypt. Hmm? Close the paragraph. You, you've got a parenthesis on the left, but not on the right. Oh, I see it. I see it. Okay. Papacy supports wokeism. Got it. My fault. Okay. And now they're going to establish the vision. Now, the vision here is 723 BC to 1798 to represent the two desolating powers. Um, but we're going to have to back off on this image of the beast as form causing the joining of the two sticks. Because if we understand what is it that parallels in our history, uh, the 2520, um, where, where would we place this then as the present truth application of they, they exalt themselves to establish the vision to support Egypt? But now here we're, we're, we're saying that that vision there is the chazon, right? So that's what they're, uh, exalting themselves to establish. That's right. the vision. Okay. And that's representing these two desolating powers in that history, that, that vision. But in our history, do we have the 2520 that occurs and is the papacy supporting that? Now, when we say wokeism, wokeism is a very wide word, right? I mean, we could say atheistics, you know, com um, atheist communism or, you know, lots of other words that we have, you know. But here, in our history, what is the papacy supporting that's the most relevant? That is what relates to the 2520. I mean, one is we know the papacy is opposed to, to Trump, right? The Pope does not like Donald Trump. But what other things has the Pope been doing in this history? How would we apply the 2520 in our history specifically? Where, where would we place it? Well, in answering the, the question, the Pope has also been supporting many small groups. 
mm-hmm. none of which are dominant. Right. Yeah. But remember, the Pope exalts itself to support wokeism, to establish the vision. The question is, what is the vision in our line? Where is the 2520 placed in our line? Because, you know, the 2520 ends, you know, in 1863, you could say it, you know, the prophetic mirror ends, but the 2520, this Chazon one, primarily represents the two desolating powers. It ends in 1798. Okay. But here, we're going to say um, that this is 1989 to the Sunday law, just in the broadest sense, that that's what the Chazon is. And it's almost a mirror in the sense that, you know, 723 BC to 1798 is the Chazon. But in ours, it's going to start at the time of the end and go to the Sunday law. Does that make sense? And then we can leave, and then we can leave the rest of the verse because they're going to fall close of probation and seven last plagues. So I'm very happy with this verse, what we're doing as a present truth application. Now, this present truth application is ending Greece, right? But we're actually going to have to put another present truth application using the same symbols that uh, represents our line from 1989 to wherever that's going to be, the Sunday law or whatever. And, and you can see that this becomes this, this pivotal point is this vision. It has these dual meaning right so you can see that that this verse is starting this 1989 to the sunday law right and and maybe in some ways that's that's what we could look at here um as as we move through this that this is going to represent that history because we know the king of the north coming against the king of the south in Penium, we've recognized that that's a parallel of 1989, right? Because the king of the north defeats the king of the south. That's that's Daniel 11, verse 40b. So 1989 also is represented by the uh, the Battle of Panean, which is going to be this history. So I, I think it's, to me, this is very remarkable. Like it's, uh, I hope it makes sense to everyone watching this. That, you know, what we've done here is, um, you know, is, is absolutely amazing. It's not, it's, it's definitely not us, you know, with our intellect figuring this out. This is just us allowing God to, to let these symbols speak from his word because we've used the Bible, right? And we've used it correctly. We're using these symbols that are given to us and, and we're accepting those symbols. Right. And and those symbols are telling us what we already know, but filling in the details. So we should be able, you know, over the next little while to get these next two verses cleared up. But uh, any, any comments about these verses that, that, you know, maybe something that that I don't notice. Obviously, people watching this, if you have some observations, um, we definitely would appreciate it. And. Anything you think that we're doing wrong here, uh, obviously, we'd appreciate that as well. Now, I know sometimes people write comments on my videos, and and I, I can sometimes appear a little bit dismissive because I'll explain why their criticism of what we did is is incorrect. Um, but it's usually, you know, usually I try to be nice about it. It's just that sometimes um, there are things that, you know, they don't see as well. And 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 we, we know there's this one guy who, you know, always points out something about if we don't agree with him, it has to do with pride. Now we're having a trouble with translation, so we shouldn't really just be hard on him because um, he may not fully understand what I'm saying, and I may not fully understand what he's saying because he's using a translation program. He doesn't speak English, so um, or at least not very well. 
So, um, but I still welcome any of these, these criticisms of what we're doing here. And lots of times he has written things that really were extremely important for us to notice. So if you have at all, you know, an observation, um, even if you think, you know, I might tear you apart, you could still write it on, on, on there and I'll try to be gentle, but mostly, we're all just in this together is how we study. So when we have a difference on the surface, if we're connected by God's spirit and we have a Christ-like character, we'll start to realize those differences are trivial. They're not a reason for us to be enemies. And, uh, but yeah, sometimes in social media, we can not be as kind as we would if we were talking in person. Okay. So hopefully that's helpful for people. It's helpful for me. Okay. Well, let's close in prayer. Uh, dear, you, dear gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the time that we've had here this morning. We are comforted by uh, the way that you lead and guide and the things that you show us in your word. We know, Lord, that you speak through these things to us individually, uh, that you love us and you care for us. We know the world hates us, um, but that is not enough to be a Christian. We know, Lord, that we need your character in us. And um, we pray for each person who, is, who has been studying these things. We know that uh, trials come to all of us. And um, we know that these things are comforting to us in our trials. So be with us uh, through the rest of, of the day. And bring us together again to study your word according to thy will. And we pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.